Confidence is hugely important when speaking English, but a lot of people are thinking about confidence in the wrong way. Let me explain why and also give you five simple ways that you can start boosting your confidence when speaking English right now. Hello, this is Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy and the YouTube channel English Speaking Success, here to help you speak better English, give better answers and get a higher score on IELTS speaking. Oh, and if you're not doing IELTS, then I'm just here to help you enjoy English. Now, in English, there's quite a popular phrase that goes, fake it till you make it. Fake, right, means false or to pretend, right? To fake it is to pretend something is true, although it's not, and then eventually it will become true. Fake it till you make it. Pretend that you're confident until you feel confident. It's, it's a bit of a psychological trick, trick. And sometimes, in some situations, it can work. And listen, if it works for you, brilliant. Stop the video go and have a cup of tea, go and have a lie down. However, I began thinking twice about this when, oh, this was a few years ago, when I said to a student, listen, just pretend to be confident and you will speak better English. And the student looked at me in the eyes and said, listen, Keith, <laughs> dear teacher, when I can speak better English, I will be more confident. And I thought, oh, wow. Am I putting the cart before the horse? Um, which one actually comes first? Are you confident? Then you speak better. Or do you speak better and then you're confident? And I began doubting. The reality is, right, it's probably a cycle, right, that you do both and they go round and round. The point is you don't want a downward cycle where you lose confidence. You want an upward cycle where you're gaining confidence. So today, let me give you now five tips that can help you boost your confidence. Oh, and as a bonus, I'm going to tell you about a fantastic tool, right, which can also help build your confidence. It's a mobile app. It's called Elsa Speak. And more about that very shortly. Right now, let's get into tip number one. Small challenges. Set yourself small challenges. Challenges are great because they help you grow. But if they're too big, you'll fail and you'll lose confidence. Small challenge plus small success equals more confidence. Simple as that. And you repeat this cycle, right? So set yourself challenges. Set yourself up to win, as we say in English, right? Give yourself a realistic goal and a challenge that you can achieve. So maybe I'm going to learn two idioms today. I'm going to study for 10 minutes today. Um, I'm going to improve my level over the next six months, right? Small challenges. Don't be thinking big challenges like, well, I'm going to study for three hours today. You're more likely to fail. I'm going to go from a band five to a band seven in two months. You're more likely to fail. Set yourself up to win. And here, a, a couple of super mini tips, right? <laughs> the first one is when it comes to reading, right? Um, read stuff that is just below your level, because then you'll read more quickly and you'll look up less words and you'll feel confident about your reading. Super mini tip number two, when you're listening, um, take very small extracts, very small passages, maybe 30 seconds, and just listen and repeat. That is such a simple challenge, right? And you can then slowly up the challenge, increase the challenge um, by listening and changing one word. So maybe you hear the phrase, for example, um, I live in London and I've lived here for five years. And you repeat, I live in London, I've lived here for five years. But then you change something. I live in London, I've lived here for three months. Simple as that. So you're setting these small challenges, 
maybe upping the level as you build your confidence. Great. Tip number two coming up. Tip number two, push your comfort zone. Now, this is related to the challenge, right? It's pushing the area where you feel comfortable to an area where you feel less comfortable. This is great to help you grow and build confidence, but it's really important you do it slowly and gradually. There is a, a very good um, idea. It comes from a guy called Pat Flynn, who's um, a wonderful entrepreneur, online businessman. Um, and he's called basically, he calls it the three second rule. And it goes like this. From the moment that you decide to do something, within three seconds, you must take action. So if you decide, okay, I'm going to find a speaking partner, or I'm going to go and speak to this colleague in English, or I'm going to sign up for this English class today. From the moment you think of doing it, within three seconds, you must act. One, two, boom. Because in those three seconds, you don't have time to think. You just go and you act. If you let a thought come in, what happens? Mm, but what if? Oh, but maybe no, no. Oh, but I'm not sure about. You must not let the thought come in. And the three second rule is really powerful. It can work really, really well. Stops you thinking, helps you act, builds your confidence. Moving on. Prepare well and practice lots. Now, in my personal experience, preparing well really helps with my confidence, right? If I'm preparing for a meeting, for an exam, speaking in public, the more I prepare, the more confident I feel because I can't control a lot of the things that happen to me but at least I can control what I'm going to do or what I'm going to say. And so that preparation can be really helpful, right? Practice as well is important. And this is because I think confidence is not your personality. It's not a trait or a characteristic. It's not fixed. It's more like a skill. It's something you can develop and you must develop and build over time. A bit like playing the piano. The more you practice, the better you get, right? So when people say, well, just be confident. For me, that's like saying, well, just play the piano. I can't. <laughs> I need to practice. I need to learn, right? For me, it's the same with confidence. It's a skill you develop. So practice is really important. Just going back to preparation, when you're preparing, right, um, maybe for the IELTS exam, I think it's so useful to get a teacher or a speaking partner, because they can give you feedback, which helps tell you where you are and what you need to focus on, what you need to prepare, and that will help you prepare. Also, they give you validation. Now, validation is like when a teacher says, that's really good. Yes, that's correct. That's excellent. Keep going. They're validating what you're saying is, is good, is correct. That can really help build your confidence as well whether it's a teacher or a speaking partner, right? And of course, when it comes to preparing for an exam, like IELTS speaking, prepare the format, understand the kind of questions, make sure you're familiar with the way the, that the exam works and what you need to do. That preparation is important. When it comes to practice, I've got a super mini tip for practicing, and this is about vocabulary. When you learn a new item of vocabulary or a word, at the beginning, always use it exactly the way that you learnt it or how you saw it. So if you learn, for example, uh, not my cup of tea, right, meaning I don't like it. If you learn or you hear the phrase, oh, swimming is not my cup of tea, when you're practising, always use it the same. Just use that. Oh, swimming is not my cup of tea. As soon as you start to change things, your confidence will go down. You know, if I start saying movies are not my cup of tea, can I use cup of tea with movies? You're not sure. What if I say you're not my cup of tea? Can I say that if I don't like people? 
Now, whether it's true or not, the point is your confidence comes down. Whereas if you just use exactly the same phrase, well, swimming is not my cup of tea, right? You're confident that it's right. Over time, of course, you learn the nuances of the word and you learn how to use it in different ways. That's fine. But to begin with, build your confidence by using it the way you learned it. Now, come with me as I dig into my toolbox. Here we go. Hello. So we've got stapler, mouse, not a real mouse. Oh, nice little speaker there. This is the one. This is it. This is the tool. So the tool I want to show you is my mobile app, Elsa Speak. Fantastic. This is going to build your pronunciation skills, build your confidence like nothing else. First of all, so Elsa is a mobile app that helps you develop your pronunciation skills in a wide range of different areas. Single sounds, phrases, sentences and conversations, right? You can study different topics. You can even do IELTS practice. Look, they've got IELTS topics. They've got questions for part one, two and even part three as well, the conversation. They've also got study sets where you can, different students and teachers have shared blocks of phrases that they want to practice. There are even IELTS study sets. Even I've got some study sets in here you can go and have a look at. Let's see how it works, right? The key here is that the artificial intelligence gives you feedback on how well you're pronouncing sounds compared to a native speaker. So we can see here the different topics we've got. Uh, Category is my favorite, continued. Trending now, we've got Tokyo, the Olympic Games, the new normal after um, confinement, um, medical center. One lesson per day. I'm going to have a look here and we're going to have a look at this one, right? Do you know what the most popular sport in the world is? So you're asked a question, you're given an answer. You can listen and then repeat. That's easy. It's football, right? That's easy. It's football, right? Excellent. So it's helping me with stress and intonation. It continues. That's right. It's called soccer in the US, though. And then another phrase that I can repeat. But notice, if I take the word easy, right, it gives me a breakdown of what's good about the pronunciation. And I can even practice this one word. Easy. Is it? Now you can see it's telling me I've got the vowel sounds wrong and it should be e, e. Easy. Easy. Let's try again. Easy. Much better. Fantastic. What a great tool. You can use this to practice all kinds of pronunciation and that's going to help build your confidence. The other great thing is that Elsa are offering discounts for all of my students including you, of course. So if you go for the one year plan, you can get a 30% discount. However, if you go for the lifetime membership, when you get Elsa in your pocket for the rest of your life, it's an 80% discount. It's a fantastic deal. You can go and check out in the links below, download the app, sign up for the lifetime membership. I think it's great value for money. When it comes to confidence, it's well worth it. Go and check it out. And for now, let's get back to some more tips to boost your confidence. OK, tip number four, identity. This is an interesting one, right? And I think some people make the mistake of thinking English is like other subjects like maths, geography, history, something you study in books out there. I disagree. I think English is a part of you. Once you learn another language, it becomes a part of your identity. Your voice is unique. The sentences you make are unique. Other people are not saying the same sentences as you, right? You need to be proud of that uniqueness, right? It's so important. And I think, you know, accept 
your identity, accept where you are. If you're a beginner, accept that you're a beginner. Some people have this strange idea that being a beginner is a bad thing. Oh, I, I'm, I'm a band four. Oh, it's, it's, it's terrible. I mean, my English is so poor. It's so bad. What? No, I'm sorry. I'm a beginner and that's it. And I'm proud, right? So listen, here are two phrases you can start using to help you with this, right, for confidence. The first one is for now. And the second one is not yet. I'm a band four for now, right? It means I'm a beginner, I'm a band four now, but things are going to change. Or I'm not a band seven yet, right? I'm a band four, but I am going to be a band seven. I just accept where I am. It's absolutely fine. I mean, enjoy being a beginner. A beginner is great. Think about all the exciting language and experiences you're going to have in the future as a beginner and growing into an intermediate and advanced speaker. It's so exciting. It's great to be a beginner. I do really think it's all about having a growth mindset. We are not fixed. We grow. We get bigger. And if in your mind you, you allow yourself to grow, you will. I mean, trust me, I'm 53. I'm growing and learning new things every day, right? Growth mindset. I think it's so important. And my last word on identity then is thinking of identity and being proud of it. Think of yourself not as an English student, but as an English speaker, whatever your level, right? Great. Let's move on. Oh dear, yes, look at this, right? It's Facebook, right? The other day, right, my wife said to me, she saw a picture and she said, am I as fat as this woman? <laughs> I said, of course not, no. But I said, more importantly, why are you asking the question? In this day and age with social media, there is a tendency for us to compare ourselves with others. Don't compare yourself, right? Um, don't compare yourself to other students and especially don't compare yourself to a native speaker of English. It doesn't help you. It's not necessary. And often that's that's the problem. That's where people lose their confidence. It's like, oh, well, I'll never be as good as that. Why can't I be like that person? Or Sam in my class is so much better than me. Comparisons don't help. Instead, focus on what is unique, right? Focus on your value and your uniqueness. Don't get hung up on thinking what other people think. You know, some students say to me, what do native speakers think of my English? And um, they must think I'm really bad, right? No. What about the examiner? Oh, I think the examiner will think I'm stupid. Well, no, don't second guess because you're probably wrong. But more importantly, don't try and guess what people think. Focus on what's unique, right? You, your voice is unique, as I said before. Um, your personality is unique. Your manner is unique. The sentences you make in your story, nobody has ever put those words together in that way in the history of time. It's totally unique. Be proud of that uniqueness and that can build up your confidence slowly. It's all a question of focus. Don't focus on comparisons, focus on your value and your uniqueness. And a final point about comparing, right? I think also bear in mind the bigger picture, focus. IELTS is actually not the end of your journey. IELTS is the beginning of your journey because that's after IELTS where you go out and look at your bigger purpose in life, whether it's studying, working, immigrating, what you're going to achieve after IELTS, that's the big picture. Focus on that and it helps you put things in perspective and it can help build up your confidence with IELTS and with speaking English. It's all about focus. So focus on yourself. <laughs> Great. Remember, confidence comes with practice and it takes time to build confidence. But if you invest that time in your learning and building confidence, you will see the results.
stay with me and I will help you build your confidence and move from just being an English student to being a confident English speaker. If you liked the tips up here, leave me a comment below. Let me know which tip you liked. Do remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Last but not least, remember to check out the Elsa Speak mobile app. You've got a 30% discount on a one year membership and an 80% discount on the lifetime membership. The links are down below. Go and check it out. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.